I want to talk to you about being pressed but not crushed, right? Being pressed but not crushed. Listen, I want to give you just kind of a little window into um, my soul and a soul this week, our lives. And uh, Team Guyana, if you're here, just holler. Okay. So as of last week, you guys know we were supposed to be heading to Guyana in one, two, two days, okay? Midweek, we found out some intense news about this chikagunya virus that had been breaking out there, and we had to take precautions. That's a real word. <laughs> it's, it's Swahili for bent over disease, for joint pain and sickness. Yeah, it's serious stuff. So we got that word. Uh, we communicated more with our contact. Over a couple of days, we discovered that even via our contact there in Guyana, he said, you guys shouldn't come here. Um, so for any of you who have ever set up trips with 30 people and your type A personality like myself, this has been planned for six months, color coordinated, lined up, dividers, down to the time in the minute, okay? So now all of a sudden, we can't go to Guyana. Yes, we were pressed. Yes, I was frustrated, <laughs> okay? And we just had to commit this to the Lord as a team. We had to do that. And I'll tell you guys, we saw God's faithfulness. Four days beforehand, we had another contact open up in Belize who could take us. So we're still going. We're going Monday morning to Belize in Central America. And all the stuff we prepped for, VBS, youth camp, sports camp, a uh, hip-hop concert we're doing at the end to get all these kids, all that stuff we prepped for, guess what? Pastor Ron and Bailey said, we could use every single part of what you had planned for our kids and our youth here. It's actually right at the time we would want to do it. Is God not awesome? So I'm standing up here sharing my heart to you all uh, from what we've walked through this week. Our whole team, Guyana, now Bailey's. Uh, team Bailey's, someone said, are we going to have t-shirts? I'm like, you got to be kidding me. I'm trying to get you plane tickets. I am wrestling with Caribbean Airlines right now. If anyone has a connection, I could use it. Don't get me started on that. Still be impressed. Still be impressed. All right, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, 7 through 9. That's going to be my main passage tonight. You could turn to it. You could punch buttons to it. Whatever you want to do, okay? 2 Corinthians 4, 7 through 9. I'm going to read it right now. But we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. We are hard-pressed on every side, but not crushed, perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not abandoned, struck down, but not destroyed. We always carry around in our body the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may also be revealed in our body. For we who are alive are always being given over to death for Jesus' sake, so that his life may also be revealed in our mortal body. So then death is at work in us, but life is at work in you. Listen, this is, I think this is very practical for us as a community, as individuals, the age group that all of us are in, whether you're in college, whether you're working, this is so practical. We live in a hard world, just like everyone else who's come before us has lived in a hard world, right? If anything, we might have a little bit easier in some cases, but I still think at the same time, in other ways, it can be even more difficult. Sometimes the more things you have around you, the more difficult it can be in certain aspects. But I think this is relevant for every single one of us here. In this passage, he says something paradoxical. It reveals the paradoxical nature of Christianity. Paradox, two almost totally polar opposite things, yet gelling together. Okay, paradox. This is what I'm going to say. Jars of clay with treasure in them. Now, if you heard that, think of a jar of clay. Anyone take pottery class in high school or college, right? You, you, yeah. My pottery was always like slanted and giant like warts on the side of it. Teacher's like, good job. And I'm 17 years old. Thanks. <laughs> My mom doesn't even want it. Um, no, she has it. Um, but you see this aspect of a jar of clay, obviously not very valuable. Treasure, you think of treasure. We all know what that means. No matter what country or culture you grew up in or how old you are, you know treasure means value, worth. In this passage, we, humanity, Christ followers, were the jars of clay. 
And yet we have this indescribable power of value inside of us, this treasure. Jesus Christ and the power of the gospel is inside this fractured vessel jar of clay. Paradoxical? Yes. And oftentimes in Christianity and the scripture, when I read something, I so often see how humbled we really need to be when we see the grandeur of who our God is and how he desires to be with us. I want to talk about pressed, right? Moments in life that we have felt the walls closing in on us. Moments in life when things have gotten a little crazy, pressures, situations, circumstances closing in on us. I was in college. It was my sophomore year. I was studying theology, lots of papers, lots of papers, 10 pages, 15 pages, some classes, 20 page papers. You had a couple weeks to do it. You had to research. You had to go in the library. You had a footnote, Chicago Turabian style. Anyone know what I'm talking about? Little brown handbook. Okay. So we had all this and it was busy. I procrastinated. Okay. I'd like to say I had lots of things I had to do, but it's not true just like more socializing, all of a sudden I'm like, oh my Lord, tomorrow my 12-page paper is due. I have two books, okay? My buddy, John Gentry, he was also in a lot of my classes, great procrastinator as well. So together I'm like, we gotta do this. He's like, we're gonna do this. We're gonna spend the whole night typing our papers. So we get up there, we're grabbing books from everyone, we've got enough, and it's just me and him up in this like study room in the dorm rooms at like two and three and four and five and six a.m. Just typing away. We felt the pressure closing in. It's like, oh my gosh, this is an 8.50 class. We have to get this paper in 8.50. Time's closing. Anyone in school, you know what I'm talking about? It's like, there's no hope. There's no hope. Now with that, what starts happening? You start freaking out. And it's, we got no sleep happening. We're going a little crazy, okay? And we're getting annoyed at each other, and John loved to tease me. So John would come up every, like, 10 minutes and, like, smack me in the back of the head and be like, ah. He was just one of those guys. I'm like, John, I'm going to, like, I'm going to literally, I'm going to, I'm going to kill you. <laughs> and that's not a, like, I'm going to swing with a giant book. It, he did it again. And finally, we both just snapped, We had an all-out brawl while laughing, but still serious. You know what I'm saying? (laughs) Throwing chairs and tables at each other. It was getting out, and I'm not dead serious. When I think about it now, I'm like, that was ridiculous. (laughs) Someone would have walked in. They would have been like, you are, you're crazy. And we were. It was 4 a.m. We're freaking out. We're feeling the pressure, and we just blow up on each other. After about 15 minutes, felt like two hours, 15 minutes of intense physical exertion towards one another, throwing books, throwing each other laughing, <laughs> boom, boom, <laughs> you know, it's like that type of thing. Finally, we were both like, okay, good, let's finish this paper. We both got A's, that's a true story. Um, so, but on a serious note, right, we've all experienced pressure, things pressing in on our lives, finances, health, direction in life, what do I do, what's my next choice? I just graduated, am I going to get a job? It's really difficult out here to get a job in my degree, now I have Student loans and debt, relationships, what's going to happen? We just broke up. Are we going to date? What's happening here? Plans, sudden, tragic news, expectations, achievements. I have to, I have to do this. If I don't get this grade, I'm going to get in trouble here with that. Responsibilities and those pressures, just slowly the walls start coming in closer and closer. Right, and right now, your minds are like, and you're, you're even feel, you might, your palms might be getting sweaty right now because you're like, thanks, you just brought up like three things that I, I'm feeling that way. It's happening, it's coming in. And we react in these moments. We react to these situations. Claustrophobic. I'm a very bad speller, so when I, when I wrote that out today, I'm like, claustrophobic. It has an R in it. Did you know that? Or am I, I feel foolish. Am I the only one? Sorry. You guys don't want to be vulnerable here tonight, huh? Don't act like you're all spelling bees. You knew what it is. It's my wife. She's know it all. No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> fear of small spaces, closed space. Anyone here like, yes, that's me? Okay, it's all right. Yes, we have a group. We'll have a support group afterwards in a tiny room. Um, 
So we're, so, so I, I want to share just one other story with you. I, I'm on stories. I'm like, haven't slept that well for the last couple of days with all this mission stuff. So if I start going in one direction, just let me go. I'll figure it out. I'll come back. I promise. Um, so college again, you've got hundreds of men in a dormitory room after 1230 at night because you're stuck on curfew. Crazy things just happen, right? It's like, you got all these guys like, <laughs> they don't know where to go. They're stuck in these rooms, dorms. They can't go out. Security's there, which is also like, maybe we'll go and get chased by security. No, that's not a good idea. But it's an adventure. We need something to do. Should be studying. You're not doing it. Okay, so I've told you guys before, we used to have these things called buck bucks, which you go down, you yell at a floor. Hey, Shekinah, what, what's a buck buck? If I try to explain everything, you'd be like, I don't have time, okay? But basically, there's 60 guys 30 and 30 from a different floor, kind of like frats. You go down there and you try to run down this long hallway without the other guys on that floor attacking you, taking you, shaving your head, put your head in the toilet. It was like you understood. But if you did it, you had bragging rights. You just look at Shekinah, you're like, you're foolish. I ran past 30 of you in a battle and I won. So we had a guy who was like, I'm going, I'm going. The pressure, right? The excitement, 30 guys are like, do it. Do it, do it. Whenever you get like chance happening, myself, I succumb to it so easily. I'll just be like, <laughs> please the crowd, you know, do whatever. It's, I don't know if anyone else is like that, but if you have 30 people chanting for you to do something, you watch. Some of you are very strong. Anna, my wife, she's like, gets even stronger as you chant louder. Me, I'm like, I gotta do it. Okay, please the masses. So, they're chanting, do it. This kid goes, he goes down there. We're all waiting at the other end of the hallway. He's got to run a long way, and there's guys just sitting at their doors, okay, hallway. They're looking at him. It's like, we're going to get you. They got golf clubs. They got wiffle ball bats, okay? <laughs> Anything you can find in a dorm room, giant textbooks. So he starts running. Sure enough, he makes it halfway, and he gets piled on, piled on. I don't like piles on, right? That, that's not fun if you've been under one. But I had to save my friend. So I run and I dive into the pile. And as I dove into the pile and I'm grabbing him, somehow someone took him out and I am alone under this like 10, 15 sweaty men <laughs> in a tiny hallway piled on each other and I start freaking out. If you've ever been at the bottom of one of those, you know what I'm talking about? It's a freak out moment. You're like, I'm not going out this way. Not like this. <laughs> So I'm biting people's legs. I'm grabbing like leg hair. I'm going crazy. Whatever I can grab and scream, I'm like, I'm, I'm getting out of this pile. All that to say, <laughs> I was not crushed. <laughs> I'm here standing before you. No, but all that to say that I felt the pressure closing in and what happened? I snapped. I broke. I went crazy. This week, pressure was closing in. There's a couple moments I'm like, oh, it just got to me. So that's funny and that's fun, but how often in our lives, right, or even right now, you might be in one of those moments. The walls are closing in on you. You feel the weight of what's happening in your life, and you're getting pressed, and you're getting pressed, and you're getting pressed. And you feel like, man, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be crushed. I'm not gonna make it through. Fear starts hitting in. What might happen? What's the worst case scenario? Anxiety, stress. There's not enough time. My worst fear is actually going to happen. You start stressing out about it. You get anxious about it. Then you get angry. You start hurting people, lashing out at people around you. You notice that? If you have a boss or someone who's under a lot of pressure, you can normally tell it's sad, and I'm guilty of this myself, because they start being a little snippy. You know, you're like, don't be snippy with me but they're under a lot of pressure. They have the responsibility. We got a deadline. Come on, I need you to do that. And so in those moments, we feel that and we start reacting to it. And I believe there's a next step in that. I think we begin to lose heart. In other words, we begin to lose maybe our passion for the things we once loved, things we looked forward to, the things that seemed to be going so well and were so exciting and it was smooth. All of a sudden now, the pressure is building things have changed. And now we begin to see something fail, not pan out as we expected. And you begin to lose heart. You feel defeated. You feel discouraged. You feel depressed. 
Now listen, I know I'm not the only one who's walked through this. And I know some of you have walked through this and others of you are walking through this right now. And I feel God wants to speak to us tonight because as a people of God, we don't have to land here. But lastly, there's only one option. If you get pressed hard enough and you can't hold it together, you get crushed, right? You get crushed. And I believe strongly that some of you have been through all of that, that pressure, whatever it is. Now you're at a place where you're a crushed person. Literally, you're a crushed person. You feel like you are just dust and ash. Your battles you fought, just slowly that pressure got to you. People might say, I guess you just didn't have what it took, and now you're questioning your identity. You've lost kind of the feelings and sensitivity of stuff happening around you. You've grown callous to it. You become cynical. You become critical. And you're at that place where you're like, I'm crushed. I'm crushed. Man, it's real. And you know what? I just described to you what the possibilities are with that little vessel, that clay, that jar of clay. That's the possibilities of it. But what do we say at the beginning? There's a treasure. There's a treasure inside of us. More than just value in that, there's power in that treasure. It's the person and the work of Jesus Christ. If you say, and you always bring it back to Jesus, yes, I do. It's not just liturgy to be religious. This is about who Jesus Christ is and what he does and what he's continuing to do. And so I'm here tonight to tell you after I just got you all so depressed. It's your faces. <laughs> but I'm here to tell you there's hope. Listen, Paul, in that passage right there that we just read, right, in 2 Corinthians, he uses what we'd say are militant terms. I'm going to read them again for you, right? Hard-pressed on every side, but not crushed. Perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not abandoned. Struck down, but not destroyed. He's emphasizing that we are in a battle, and it's real. But we do not have to be defeated. Now listen, though, this does not mean, hear me, that you are the powerhouse. Because sometimes I think we get it wrong when we approach God on things. You're like, yo, give me the power, <laughs> right? And, and now I have it, and I'm going to go do it. Well, if you realize that, a lot of times it just gets depleted right away because it's just more of a moment in halo. Now listen, I'm going to get more into this, but hear me. You are not the powerhouse. Something more miraculous and supernatural is taking place. You've become the unexpected vessel in which God's power comes forth. A conduit where he constantly gets the glory. And you never run out because he's filling you. He's the you're the vessel. He's the fluid inside of there. He's the treasure inside that little, weak, fragile clay jar. He gets all the glory. Because the world will look at you and say, you got crushed. You got crushed because you didn't have it in you. And you know what? They're right. We don't have it in us. But 2 Corinthians 4.16, I want to read that to you. That's further down. It says, therefore, we do not lose heart. Though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. Though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. This is the emphasis here. It's not against the body and all this stuff, but we know what happens. Our bodies, they waste away. One day we will die. We get old, wrinkly, right? This happens. Experience things in our lives, and you can look back five years ago, and you're like, man, I had so much more energy at that time. I didn't get achy, when I would go do this, now I do. You know what I'm saying? We see that, that's constantly. But yet inwardly, it says what? We're being renewed day by day. We are being renewed by the power of who Christ is. The power of God first comes when we realize something, how weak we are. Now listen, I'm not against humanity, but I'm all about humanity functioning in the way it's supposed to, and that's in the hands of the Creator. So hear me on this, because I know we're going against kind of our culture. It's like, yo, humans are the best. 
We're the top of the food chain. We're the smartest people because we're the only people. <laughs> Unless there's someone out there. No. So I'm not going against humanity, but I'm also not humanistic. And that's something that I want you to hear because I think if we tap into this as Christians, we'll begin to experience humanity how God intended it and be the people God called us to be. But we have to realize it. It comes from surrender. But listen, I want to hit this. I'm going to invite the band to come back up here at this time. Because I want to talk about what our God does with dust and ash. Because for those of you who feel pressed, my challenge to you is stop. When you feel the pressure, let it get you on your knees. And may you look up and find that strength in Christ. May you realize you can't do it. May you realize that when you see weakness, it's in our weakness that his strength can be made perfect. It's in our weakness that God can begin to do mighty things. But some of you, you feel like dust and ash. You have been crushed. Thank God our God is a God who rebuilds. He's a God who rebuilds. Listen, at the beginning when God created man, he formed us out of the dust and the dirt of the earth. Do you know what gave us life? His breath. He breathed into us. God breathed into us. And out of that, he formed who we were. Have you forgotten what God can do based on your own limitations? Based on humanity's own limitations? Have you forgotten what God can do in your life just based on your own limitations? You've been looking in the mirror at yourself, at what great men and women in the world, as they would say, achieved and went through and all this stuff. So you're basing the way you can be healed, the way you can be reformed into what God wants you to be just based on people and humanity. Our God holds all things. And if you're there and you feel like you're that dust, I just want you to see the Lord that he can scoop in, he can hold you, and he'll begin to form you and make you. And I want to read Isaiah 61, 1 through 3. Because in this, the prophet Isaiah isn't just speaking about Israel. It's a typology. What that means is when you see evidence of the Messiah, of Jesus Christ in the Old Testament. And in this, he's talking about our Jesus. And I want you to really listen to these words. The spirit of the sovereign Lord is on me. Because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted. To proclaim freedom for the captives. And release from darkness for the prisoners. To proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God. To comfort all who mourn. Provide for those who grieve. To bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes the oil of joy instead of mourning, a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. They will be called oaks of righteousness, a planting of the Lord for the display of his splendor. So when you allow yourself to be in the hands of God, you will see that dust and that ash become a place of beauty. You'll see that dust and that ash become a place where a tree grows forth from it, strong, that when people look at it, God gets all the glory. That's the God we serve. And so often we put limitations on him because of our own limitations. And I think that's why we don't see freedom in our lives. I think that's why we don't see breakthrough. I also think that's why we get crushed. But I'm believing a promise that Jesus speaks to us. And he spoke it when he went to the cross. In 2 Corinthians, we've got promises made to us that we just read. Pressed but not crushed, persecuted not abandoned, struck down but not destroyed. But the only way that those are true is because someone kept their promise to us. And that was Christ. Hebrews 12, 2 says this, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross. He was pressed, he was not crushed. Scorning its shame and sat down at the right hand of God, the throne of God. 
He's not only our example, he's the savior who paved the way. And I just think we have to be reminded of that. Personally, I had to be reminded of that this week. Yeah, in light of some of the things you guys are walking through in your own personal lives, what I experienced is not even close to the intensity of what you're having to walk through. But this little change of this trip, I had to be like, yo, I'm feeling crushed here. And I kept saying to myself, but this is the truth, God. I am pressed, but I am not crushed. Why? Because of who I am? No, I'm a clay vessel, but because of the treasure of Christ Jesus who's in me. And when we do that, guess who receives all the glory? He does. He receives all the glory. So let's stand up tonight. Because when we look at that example of Christ who's pushing to the cross, he's, he's running to Calvary for you and for me. He's enduring past it all. There's something so beautiful. There's more irony. There's more paradox behind this. We are the treasure of God. He was pushing to the cross for you and for me. I've heard this a hundred times. No, really listen to this. We are his treasure. And yet he allows us to hold the treasure of his love. This clay, scarred, chipped vessel can hold the treasure of God and his power and his love. But if we don't realize and if we're not willing to accept the realization that Christ is in us and his spirit is in us, we will never see the fruit and the power of what he can do. My challenge to you tonight is open up your heart Open up your conscience and your mind and say, okay, God, I want your spirit. I want your Holy Spirit inside of me. I want the realization of your Holy Spirit in me once again. Because I've just felt like a shattered vessel. I've just felt pressed and I'm about to be crushed. I felt like dust. But when the breath of God enters your lungs, that dust becomes alive in the hands of God. That's my challenge to you. You want to see Christianity be real? You want to see Christ be real? You start getting desperate. Start surrendering. Get on your knees. Cry out to the Lord. Jesus, I feel pressed. I had to cry out to God multiple times this week. Lord, I feel a weight upon me. Things are coming in this year in my life. Heavy things in my life I've had to walk through. But Jesus, I need you. Let your strength come forth. I need the power of your spirit. This is not just good thinking and talking. This is not just me saying I have the power. This is that all the glory goes to the Lord. But you guys need to be told that tonight and reminded. Reach out, cry out. Watch what the Holy Spirit can do. When you surrender, when you surrender and you realize it is him and not you, when you're humbled, you'll see great things. So let's just worship. God's been doing special stuff these past month here as we just continue to worship. So let this time be between you and the Lord as you cry out to him.